So you can definitely see that there's been an uptrend in short exempt over total volume ratio in the stock here. Finance family, it's the other brother Adam Gibbags, Bags, and today we're going to be getting reg show short sale volume data and short exempt volume data from the FINRA API. And we're going to do it in three easy steps. We're going to first prepare the filters for our data request, then we're going to make the data request, and then once that data comes in, we're going to do some quick math so that we can do something useful with the data. So go ahead and pop open your trusty Google the source of all truth, and then Google FINRA API docs. Scroll down a little bit here, then we've got our documentation, FINRA API Developer Center, pop open those docs, and then open another Google window here, Google search FINRA short sale volume data, and then scroll down a little bit, and we're gonna find here, FINRA short sale volume daily data user guide. And this is gonna just help you get an idea of what is actually the data that you're receiving here. So if you flip back over to the documentation, there's definitely some stuff you might wanna check out. They do have a public API so you don't really need to make an account but you can make an account and then get credentials they have a whole bunch of details here about how to set up an API client once you create an account and then how to use you know post requests to go ahead and get your authentication tokens that you can use to make requests to the API but what we're going to be doing doesn't need that we're just going to use the public API then if you keep scrolling down through the docs here there's a section platform usage limits it's actually really crucial you should take a read through this just to get your bearings here they have request rate limits so 20 requests per second per IP and then if you're making these larger asynchronous requests it's 20 requests per hour per data set so they have size limits on your API requests so for synchronous requests it's 5k records and then for async requests it's 100k records per request but what we're gonna do here is just basically use the synchronous request in a smaller size we're just gonna be requesting for one stock at a time and then they also have a limit on the payloads and they also have instructions here about if you're going to be pulling larger amounts of data how to basically you would want to program an algorithm to kind of do that they've got just a ton of other details here that you might want to go through one place that we definitely want to familiarize ourselves with is our post data request payload parameters so when we're building out our filter for our data request we're going to be digging in here later so let's scroll down further to the equity section here let's click into reg show daily short sale volume and then here are the information on which group and which data set we're gonna need when we create a post request. And then here's also a sample payload that we're gonna use to create our own custom filter. So I know that took a while, but here we are with the script. So it definitely pays dividends to take your time to understand how the API works. And there's a ton of data that comes out of this thing. So it's useful to get to know. First up, we're gonna import our modules here, very straightforward. Next, we're gonna assign two variables so we can specify in our URL down here you know which data set and which group we're going to use so OTC market here and reg show daily you can see these details here under our reg show daily short sale volume header we have our group and our data set here so then we've inserted these as strings here and then we've went ahead and just chose a ticker that we want to get our short exempt volume for next we're going to build this URL with an F string here it's going to insert our group name and our data set name into the URL and then we're going to go ahead and create our headers here this is basically just going to describe what type of data we're going to send in our post request and then what type of data we want to receive back from our post request and then up next is our custom filter that we're going to create so that we can just filter down the data when we make our request to the API now you can basically copy and paste the filter from the documentation so basically when you want to make a custom filter for your request you can just come over here to the sample request payload and kind of copy over this into your script you'll see that it's very similar it's a dictionary and then has these certain key values which you can find in the document documentation so if you go to the documentation you scroll back up to resource endpoints and you go to the post data subheading you can see here in this parameter column those are all the keys you would use in your dictionary and then the description column is essentially the values but they give you an example of what it would look like so if you added a date range it would look like this and then if you wanted to add a limit it would look like this offsets are here and then also if you want to make a synchronous request you can do that there so if you open the sample here underneath you can really get an idea of what a request payloads looks like. So you can specify which fields you want to return back from the API, and then you can set filters on the type of data that's requested. So here they're using the weekly summary and they're just getting weekly summaries for Apple dates more recently than 2019.
2019. So essentially what we're doing in our custom request here is instead of having a 1000 item response, we wanna have a 5000 item response, which is the max for synchronous responses. And then we also want our securities information process symbol identifier, AKA our stock symbol to be equal to our field value here, which we have specified in the code above. Now, once you have this custom filter, you can pass it into your post request. So here we're making a post request. We have the URL specified, we have our headers from above, and then we're also passing in our custom filter as JSON. Then all we do is we go ahead and send the post request. So I went ahead and I ran the code all the way up to our post request. We're getting a 200 response back and then you can see what the response looks like. So that's a ton of data. What we're gonna wanna do next is just format that from a dictionary into a data frame. And as you can see there now, it's much neater and it looks like we've got a bunch of different columns here. Now these columns, you're gonna be able to see them inside the data guide that I showed you earlier. It explains what all of these are. So if you flip back over to the data guide, you can see all the different columns here. And then here's a description of what they are. So next, what we do in this line of code here is we just reformat this trade report date, which is a string date into a date time object. This is gonna be important because when we pull the total volume later from Yahoo, we want the indexes to match so we can merge the data. Next here, we're just creating a dictionary called aggregate functions here. And it's just gonna specify what aggregate function we want to apply to each columns when we do our group by in the next line here. So if you look at the date data that's returned from your initial request, you'll see that there's multiple of the same day. What we wanna do is we wanna group the data by day. So we wanna add the volume data from the different reporting facilities all together on the same day. So we kinda of have like a total volume number. And that's why we're applying some functions to these columns here. So these next two line of code, all we're doing is renaming the index to be date. And then we're also changing the column names to these names here. So now we have a beautiful looking data frame here that has aggregated data. We have volume, short volume, and short exempt volume aggregated by date. Now this next part of the code, essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to Yahoo Finance and then we're gonna get the total volume by date and then we're gonna add it to our data frame. This is important because the data that you see here that comes from FINRA is only the data that was reported to FINRA. So there's some trades that go on that aren't getting reported to FINRA. So the volume that you see in the first column here doesn't give you an actual representation of the total volume that occurred. So if you're gonna do short exempt to total total volume ratio, then you need to get the total volume. So we're gonna to go to Yahoo to get that data. So all we're doing in this next piece of code here is we're just getting start dates and end dates for our data request. We just want data that goes back one year so that we can match all that data to the data from FINRA. And then these next two lines of code, what you see here is it makes the Yahoo data request. If you haven't seen that video, you can check that out. And then also we're adding our total volume from our technical data request to Yahoo, adding that into our aggregate data data frame so everything's centralized. So now, as you can see here, we've added our total volume column to this data frame. Now these next five lines of code create different ratios that you can use to analyze short exempt and short volume ratio. So essentially we have short volume over the total volume from FINRA, short volume over the total volume, short exempt volume over the short volume from FINRA, short exempt volume over the total volume from FINRA, and short exempt volume over the total volume. And then the last part just graphs everything out. So you can definitely see that there's been an uptrend in short exempt over total volume ratio in this stock here. And you can also see the exponential increase of the amount of shares that are short exempt. So you could definitely do this for more than one stock. You could put this type of program in a for loop and run it over a certain universe of stocks, or you could have your list of stocks and kind of just go like a five stock chunk at a time in order to make less API requests. I think that would probably be a better way or you could really go for the asynchronous request and just try to do a lot. But um, like I said, there was the limit restrictions. So you wanna be aware of that. Bam, and there you have it. You have your short exempt volume data and your short sale volume data from FINRA, direct from the API, it's free. Now you can go ahead and make a short sellers dashboard. Watch out for those green candles. If you wanna support me, you can always buy me a coffee. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave me a like, subscribe to the channel. Finance fam, you have my blessing. Let's go get these bags.